Hi, I'm Mike Elliott, and you're watching CEO Roadshow. In this episode, we're joined by Mr. Anthony Tennyson. He is the CEO and co-founder of Awaken Life Sciences Corp., a biotechnology company researching, developing, and commercializing therapeutics to treat addiction with a near-term focus on alcohol use disorder. Mr. Tennyson is an experienced financial services industry executive with 10 years in international strategy, commercial leadership roles with Aon PLC, and five years with Merrill Lynch and Bank of Ireland. Anthony holds an MBA in strategy and finance and a master's in science and technology, both from UCD, Ireland's top business ranked school or top ranked business school. I'm sorry. Uh, the stock trades under um, in Canada on under AWKN uh, here in the US on the OTCQB under uh, AWKNF and also on the uh, FTSE uh, under uh, Awaken. Uh, right. Is it under 954? OK, anyway, uh, good morning, Anthony, and welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Mike, how are you? Good, good to talk to you. Uh, good to talk to you. Good to talk to your audience today. Yeah, our main listing is is on the Neo Exchange in Canada. Uh, secondary listing is on the OTCQB uh, in the US. And yeah, the Frankfurt listing, it's it's tertiary. It's, it's not key one for us. Well, so just tell us, start off, tell us about your background and what led you uh, to starting Awaken Life Sciences. Great, great, and happy to do so. So, as you said, you know, I spent a, spent a good few years working in the capital markets, and then I transitioned to work in professional services. Uh, I spent, uh, you know, Aon was very good to me, but I spent eight to ten years living in London, three days a week with my wife and family and kids back in Dublin. Let's be honest, you know, I was I was living in a hotel, probably drinking too much. It wasn't good for me. It wasn't good for my family. Uh, I know a few guys over in Canada through mutual acquaintances. And uh, we started to put our heads together and decided to do something more entrepreneurial. And what we decided to do was to work together to bring the benefits of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy to bear to solve a problem that's close to my heart, which is addiction. And we set the company up um, in mid 2020. And since then, Mike, we've built a very, very strong company focused on democratizing psychedelics to enable us to solve one of the biggest unmet medical needs of modern times, which is addiction. Yeah, yeah, couldn't agree more. And especially in, in, in these stressful times with COVID and everything, all those problems are are bigger than ever. So um, next, it's yeah, it is. I mean, if you look at the statistics, I don't want to digress too much, but uh, yeah, they've, the, the statistics in the last two years since the onset of COVID for, for drug addiction and all kinds of addiction, alcohol addiction have all certainly uh, jumped off the charts. So next, before we get into your R&D pipeline, can you tell us about, and speaking of this, uh, you know, the market need you're trying to address and um, also the potential market size for addiction treatment? I'm very happy to do so. Um, the, the problem of addiction, unfortunately, is a significant and growing problem. 20% uh, of the planet, Mike, suffer with a substance addiction and hundreds of millions of more people suffer with behavioral addictions. Um, the current standard of care is poor for the treatment of addiction. Uh, you take alcohol use disorder, for example, which is our near-term focus. It affects 400 million people globally. And there is typically a 75% relapse rate for treatments for alcohol use disorder within the first 12 months of treatment. In fact, only 8% of people who have that disease in the US seek treatment and only 10% of people who have that disease in the UK seek treatment. And so despite alcohol use disorder in specific, specifically and addiction generally affecting so many people um, and the current standard of care being as poor as it currently is, the marketplace is significant. It's underperforming, which is key for us, but it's significant, which is key for investors. So if we take a look at the US, in the US, there are 10 to 15,000 addiction treatment clinics, and they generate $40 billion a year revenue. And that is through the lens of the fact that they have a 75% failure rate for the treatment of alcohol use disorder. In the UK, uh, the UK National Healthcare Service, which is the public healthcare system in the UK, spends $4.5 billion a year on alcohol use disorder related illnesses. So what's good for your audience to think of and to be aware of is that there is a significant unmet medical need where there's a, a, a disease that affects a significant proportion of the adult population globally. 
the current treatments are ineffective and lacking innovation. And despite that, there is a significantly large industry that is meant to be providing treatment. The total market size that we see it as being is worth $100 billion a year. And that is for an incumbent industry that is highly underperforming and uninnovative. And so what we're doing as a company is we are researching, developing and commercializing more effective treatments for addiction in order to provide hope for individuals, families and communities whose lives are being destroyed by this chronic disease. And the approach that we're taking to treat addiction is new and innovative. We're targeting the brain circuits that house the behaviors that drive the addictions. And you could view that as being the third evolution in treating addiction. So evolution one, Mike, is talk-based therapy. That's the AA. It's admirable, but it doesn't work. It's got a 90% relapse rate. Evolution two is drugs and therapy used in sequence. So drugs to sort of block the uptake. So you could take Vivitrol as being an example of that, used to increase the probability of success for detox, has some nasty side effects, and essentially it stops alcohol having an effect in the brain. And that then sets you up to get through detox before you engage in your 12 steps program. It works, but it doesn't work for all people. We're the third evolution. We're using drugs to disrupt the brain circuits that house the behaviors and in the space that drive the addiction. And in the space that that disruption provides, we're coming in with proprietary psychotherapy to enable people to develop much more robust and dynamic coping mechanisms to prevent or to increase the probability of preventing relapse. And Mike, that approach has been proven now to work in late stage clinical trials. We have completed a phase 2B clinical trial for alcohol use disorder, which is a condition that affects 400 million people and for which the current standard of care is poor. People coming into that trial, they were sober 2% of the time. So that's seven days a year they were sober. People who drink that much, Mike, there is a one in 10 probability, I beg your pardon, a one in eight probability of fatality in the trailing 12 months. Just think of that. Think of the amount of people and families destroyed by drinking that much. People who went through the, our trial, coming out of the proprietary arm of that trial, they were sober 86% of the time. So sober 320 days a year. So seven days a year to 320 days a year fed through to a statistically significant improvement in liver function and reduced the probability of fatality from one in eight to one in 80. And so now what we are doing is we are developing and have developed and are making available more effective treatment options for people suffering from this chronic disease. And so that's really what drives us every single day. There is a significant market opportunity, which is unfortunately growing, valued at $100 billion. It's an industry that is large and underperforming. And what we're going to do is we're going to disrupt that industry to enable us to deliver more effective therapeutics to families, individuals, and communities suffering with this disease. And we have proven efficacy from a phase 2B trial using proprietary ketamine-assisted therapy to treat alcohol use disorder. And we're now bringing that forward into phase three to enable us to provide hope for those individuals, families, and communities for whom current treatments are just not working. Wow, that is amazing. Uh, from seven days to 282 days, or that, that from two, 7% to 86% sober, that's, uh, that alone is, is phenomenal. 86% yeah, that's incredible. Well, now let's get into some of your current R&D pipeline. What types of treatments are you offering now and are you working on? Happy to do so. So we do two things in the company, Mike. We do R&D and we do commercialization. And that sets us apart from an awful lot of companies in the biotech space in the fact that we are a revenue generating biotech company. And we're revenue generating in just our second financial year. So if we look at what we do in the R&D side, we've got four R&D programs. Ketamine for alcohol use disorder, ketamine for behavioral addictions, MDMA for alcohol use disorder, and our own NCE R&D program. Um, we have a completed phase 2B program with efficacy proven that is three times better than the current standard of care for alcohol use disorder, which affects those 400 million people. And we're bringing that forward into a phase three trial. We're partnering 
with the National Healthcare Service in the UK and the University of Exeter to de-risk that phase three trial. We've actually applied grant, we, Mike, we've applied for a grant from the UK state to cover two thirds of the cost for that phase three trial. And we're hoping to make some announcements on that in the coming weeks. Uh, ketamine for behavioral addictions. Um, we have completed the first studies of their kind to develop a drug-based treatment for these behavioral addictions, which we're able to do because we're focused on disrupting the brain circuits that house the behaviors that drive the addiction, which works across both substance and behavioral addictions. And very uniquely, we filed global patents if successful, I mean, we'll be the only company in the world able to commercialize ketamine, its metabolites and its derivatives in the context of treating a range of behavioral addictions that affect 800 million people or more, and for which there is currently no pharmacological based treatments. We've in licensed a successful phase 2A trial for MDMA for alcohol use disorder, which proved that MDMA was safe and well tolerated by the patient cohort. We have a phase 2B planned and we will be initiating that later, or sorry, next year in 2023. And we like, we like how ketamine and MGMA work in the context of treating addiction and how they complement psychotherapy. So what we do is we use these compounds to make psychotherapy more effective. We like how ketamine works. We like how MGMA works. But like I said, we've got commercialization activity. And what we're learning in the commercialization activity is some of these traditional psychedelics like MGMA, like psilocybin, and like LSD, will be hard to commercialize at scale because they take so long to work in the clinic. And that means, you know, to be clunky to deliver in the clinic. So we're actually running our own drug dev program, Mike, to take the make the benefits of MDMA available, but make it available in a two-hour treatment window, enabling us and our partners to be significantly more efficient in their commercialization activities than with traditional psychedelics. So that's what we've got, is we've got a very deep, relevant pipeline that we're already commercializing but because we've got that deep pipeline it de-risks awaken as an investment proposition for investors because we're not just a one-trick pony we've got four programs so multiple bites at the apple or multiple yeah multiple shots on goal if we're using soccer analogies instead of food analogies but we've de-risked the business further mike because we've got commercialization activity we've got two revenue streams clinics today out licensing uh, starting off next year. So multiple R&D programs with IP moats around each one of the programs and then de-risking it further because we're actually commercializing our IP already today in clinics that we own and operate in the EU. Wow, that's amazing. That's uh, that's impressive. And, and, you know, I think microdosing and psychedelics and things like that are are becoming more uh, commonly understood or accepted as a, as a possible um, treatment method. I think they've been treating for years now, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder with uh, MDMA therapy, guided MDMA therapy. So those things are effective tools that um, are, are can you know being gaining I guess popularity and acceptance if, if from a clinical standpoint. Um, you know, you kind of just mentioned it at the end. Actually, my next question was, you know, can you give us an overview of your business model and path to profitability, uh, which you already said, you know, licensing IP and, and at the clinics and stuff. But you want to elaborate on that anymore? I'm happy to do so. So, like I said, we do two things, right? We do R and D and we do commercialization. So that sets us apart from most other biotechs. Um, and that de-risks us from an investment perspective for investors. And I've spoken a fair bit about the R&D side of the business in the previous question, but now to just double click on our commercialization activity. So we've got a three-stage commercialization approach in Awaken. Stage one is to commercialize what we've developed in the R&D business in an off-label fashion in clinics that we own and operate ourselves. So medicines can be delivered, they're, once they're approved, they can be prescribed on label. So a medicine is approved to treat a specific indication or a specific cohort, but doctors are permitted to prescribe that off label. So ketamine, Mike, is approved in most territories as an anesthetic and as a painkiller, but experienced doctors are permitted to prescribe ketamine off label for other indications. So what we are doing in our clinics, we've got three clinics, one in Norway and two in the UK, where our doctors are permitted to prescribe ketamine for treating addiction and also the comorbidities of depression, anxiety, and PTSD. And so we have already started to commercialize the IP that we've generated in our R&D business. We're now commercializing that in our clinics. The second stage of our commercialization strategy is to out-license what we have developed in our R&D business and are using our clinics to out-license that 
to other clinics, to third party clinics, to enable them to deliver our therapeutics to their clients. And so we're going to target the North American market with that one. We're going to target the UK EU market with our clinics and the North American market with our licensing partnerships. And bearing in mind, as I said at the beginning of the call, there's 10 to 15,000 addiction clinics in the US generating $40 billion a year revenue. They typically operate at a 7% margin and they typically have a 25% success rate for their treatments for alcohol use disorder. So we believe we can make them more effective at a higher margin or more effective at a lower price point, whichever they choose. But I have a vague memory from my MDA, my MBA that being able to deliver something more effective at a lower price point or more effective at a higher margin is a good thing. So that's what we're going to start doing. And we're going to start doing that in Q3, Q4 this year, putting us in a very unique position as being a biotech that has two revenue streams in its second slash third financial year. And then we're also going to pursue our R&D program, you know, secure, seeking to secure marketing authorization and regulatory approval, UK and US for our therapeutics. And when that happens, we'll commercialize those through a very traditional prescription biopharma model. So our commercialization activity, stage one clinics, stage two licensing partnerships, stage three traditional biopharma commercialization. And things are going well on that front. We reported a 24% quarter on quarter revenue increase out of our clinics business uh, from Q4 last year to Q1 this year. And we're on track to report a similar improvement in revenue for this current quarter um, in due course. Incredible. All right, great. Well, uh, solid business model, solid uh, market opportunity, and it looks like you've assembled an impressive team at Awaken. Can you tell us more about them? Indeed, we are very lucky with the caliber of the team that I've managed to build. I've, I've built a team for tomorrow, but who is successfully executing today. And we have industry leaders across the board and the management and the advisory team. If you look at our board, uh, we've got the former global chief commercial officer from Gilead, Paul Carter, on our board. Uh, he brought three of the world's top 10 revenue generating drugs to market. A very interesting thing that he keeps reminding me is that when he was in Gilead, 400 million people globally suffered with hep C. It's the same number of people that are affected by alcohol use disorder. And the cure that um, Gilead developed for hep C catapulted them from single billions to 90 billion market cap. So he's critical to us for the biotech side of the business. We've also got a guy called Steve Page on the board. He's the former CEO of the Priory, which is the UK version of the Betty Ford. So critical to us for the clinic side of the business. And very importantly, on the investment side, we've just appointed a guy called Dennis Purcell as a strategic advisor to me on the board. And Dennis is one of the 100 top 100 uh, regarded individuals in the biotechnology investment industry. And he did, amongst other things, back in his early career, he was um, part of Chase HQ, which was a Humberger and Quitch at Chase Bank before it was acquired by JP Morgan. So a very well-connected biotech guy. And then on the management team, we're very lucky to have some industry leaders in Professor David Nutt, who is the global authority on the use of psychedelics to treat addiction, and Professor Celia Morgan, who led that phase 2B ketamine trial and is actually driving all of our ketamine research. So an incredibly strong team. And I think then from interesting from your, your audience perspectives on the advisory board, you've got someone called Professor Barbara Mason, who is a director of the Scripps Institute in the US. And she's one of the most highly regarded US researchers at a federal level in uh, the area of alcohol and addiction research. So she really is a heavy hitter at the federal level in the US um, from, from an R&D perspective for alcohol use disorder. So a very strong team that we're lucky to have who are really built for tomorrow, but executing for today. Well, all right, Anthony, that's all the questions I had for today. Uh, is there anything else you'd like investors to know about Awaken Life Sciences before we close? Indeed, there, there's a couple of things. Really, it focuses on, on the near-term catalyst that we have coming down the track over the next six to 12 months. So our lead program, key catalyst, progressing that asset forward into phase three with a planned definitive or pivotal trial in the UK. Key catalysts, uh, the winning of a grant from the UK state to fund two thirds of that trial, which we should get during early to mid Q3. 
and initiating that trial late Q4, early Q1 next year. Second key catalyst for your audience to think about is our planned uplisting of our OTC QB listing up onto the NASDAQ at some stage in 2023. And the third thing for your audience to think about, or catalyst for your audience to be thinking about, is the development of our second revenue channel as we outlicense and successfully win clients in our outlicensing proposition into the North American economy, which is a significant opportunity for us. Other than that, I'd just like to thank you for your time, Mike, and thank your audience for their time as well. And to say I'm happy to answer any questions that they may have. If they just want to drop me an email, it's anthony at awakenlifesciences.com. Well, uh, thanks again, Anthony, for your time. It was a pleasure meeting you and having you on the show. We look forward to catching up with you again uh, for our listeners. And we're also going to be doing some live webinars coming up soon. We haven't announced the date, but that will be announced on CEOroadshow.com. Um, and we look forward to starting our coverage on this exciting new biotech company, uh, Awaken Life Sciences. So, Anthony, until next time, take care and stay safe. Thanks, All right, everyone, you've been watching CEO Roadshow. We've been talking again to Mr. Anthony Tennyson. He's CEO of Awaken Life Sciences. To learn more about them, please visit their website at Awaken. That's A-W-A-K-N, lifesciences.com. Thanks again for watching CEO Roadshow.